I'm David Satterwhite. Uh, I'm Center Director for CIEE's newest center on the planet uh, here in Kyoto. Uh, I'll spend a minute or two just introducing myself and then ask uh, Karen too as well. Um, I had the great privilege of growing up here in Kyoto, literally from six months old to 15 and then back for some university studies uh, and uh, have been engaged in study abroad most of my life. Um, study abroad can change your life and I'm living witness to that. I had a couple of weeks study abroad trip to Korea from Japan uh, and uh, changed my major, went on to a, a master's and PhD in Korean studies, in addition to having uh, lived in Japan now 50 years. I've lived in uh, Tokyo for about 30 years. I've lived here in uh, Kyoto the remainder. Uh, and uh, it was a real privilege to come back and open the CIEE Center here in Kyoto. But I also worked with the CIEE Tokyo program um, uh, for several months after I was hired last year and uh, look forward uh, through the slides that you'll see today uh, uh, to uh, be able to address uh, questions both for Tokyo and Kyoto and the different kinds of programs that we have in each. I'll just add a footnote. Uh, study abroad, as I said, uh, can be mind bending. I took 34 university students uh, from the University of Puget Sound out in Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington, on the road in Asia for nine months in nine different countries. Imagine uh, the, the cultural uh, adjustment of 34 students, uh, university students, um, uh, in nine different countries for a whole academic year on the road. Uh, uh, we had a blast, uh, we learned a lot, and uh, I brought everybody home safely. Uh, anyway, uh, that's enough on me, but uh, Karen, uh, jump in and introduce yourself as well, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Karen Hendrickson, and uh, I echo some of what you've heard everybody else say so far in that I also got my study, my start in study abroad as a high school student. I was, uh, I took a gap year, which means I graduated from high school and then came to Japan and uh, spent one of the best and most challenging, honestly, uh, years of my life. And because it was the best and most challenging, it really did impact me a lot. Uh, and I fell in love with Japan, decided to uh, major in Japanese education in college. So I graduated from college, taught Japanese in the States for 25 years, and now I'm back living the dream by living in Japan. This is my 38th time to Japan. Uh, I was senior program leader uh, for uh, CIE uh, for nine or 10 times now. I can't remember how many, but anyway, enough times that I know how lucky you are. And I feel honored to be able to share some of my experiences and guidance with you. So thanks in advance. I'll see you guys in a summer. Let me, let me add that Karen uh, is a valuable member of Team Kyoto. Uh, and we look forward to having uh, Karen back aboard. Um, uh, COVID, as you can imagine, has interrupted uh, a lot of our lives, but we're very much, very much looking forward to having you all in Japan, uh, either in Tokyo or in Kyoto. Um, and uh, so I echo what uh, Karen has just said as well. Pierre, um, uh, take it away or, or how do we proceed? You can um, share your screen now and you can jump right onto your map slide. With map. Okay. Um, once the once we're on the screens, I'll have difficulty seeing the chat, seeing the chat room up here. No so if, if um, people have questions, um, um, by all means, let uh, Pierre know uh, either through the chat room or um, waving your hand because uh, I may not see those uh, either. So and let we'll me try. Have a, oh, sorry. Yeah, go on. We will have a, a few minutes for questions at the end of the, the slides, then break into groups and then gather again as a, as a full group so you guys can ask any questions you, you have. All right. Um, All right. Let me try to um, get this going and Can people see the screen? Uh, yes. Good, all right. Um, 
We're delighted to have you take part uh, in this session. Uh, we're looking very much looking forward to your participation in the program uh, in the coming summer. Uh, the uh, CIEE Global Navigator, and this is a program we're calling Destination Japan. Pierre, are you recording this session? Uh, yes, I'm recording the session. I'll share it with everyone after. Very good. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'm David Satterwhite, Center Director for uh, CIEE Japan, uh, and with experience in Tokyo as well. Uh, you see some students over to the left on the screen. Uh, this is at a famous site in Kyoto called Fushimi Inari. It's a shrine. And in Japan, you can tell it's, whether it's a shrine or a temple by the tori, this gate, uh, often in red, not always in red. Uh, but these are some students that we had this past year, uh, this year actually, uh, before uh, interruptions uh, because of COVID. Um, see if I can advance the slides. Okay, a little too fast. Yeah, you can, you can skip that, or I'll just say that if anybody online who has not yet changed their names, if you could just add a little um, label to your name so that I know where you're going and what session, I will use that to put you in the right discussion group after this. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. <clears throat> All right. Welcome to Japan. And uh, uh, it's possible that some of you have visited Japan before. I can't see a, 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 a any hands raised, but if you have, um, uh, you know that Japan is a very welcoming place. Uh, you'll see on the map that we uh, uh, have circled Tokyo off to the right on the map. Uh, the It is the nation's capital. Uh, it is the center of, uh, well, about 25 million people in the broader metropolitan Tokyo. Uh, and it was not always the capital of Japan, but uh, from about 1603, so that's uh, a good 400 some years uh, on, it, it has served as capital of Japan. Kyoto, where I am, and, and you'll see uh, the circle uh, off to the left, was the capital of Japan uh, 1,200 years ago and until 1603, for the most part, was capital and remains what we call Japan's cultural capital. CIEE runs programs in both cities, Tokyo and in Kyoto. Uh, and so we're going to go through some uh, dimensions of, of the two different cities and programs. Um, let me, I'm going to give you some reasons to come to Japan. Now, most of you have already <laughs> committed or are already very, very interested. So this may not be new, but um, uh, in terms of, so I've got trouble with my clicker. And let me see if I can, there we go. If you've already been studying Japanese, now you want to use it, you want to make friends with it, improve your Japanese, and maybe impress your friends by the improvement that you find. Uh, and so that's one top reason that people come to Japan. Okay, maybe you're a total maniacal fan of manga and anime, uh, so why not go to the source? Uh, here in Kyoto, that might be the manga museum, the first of its kind or in Tokyo, the uh, Studio Ghibli. Probably everyone has seen Totoro and some of the uh, Ghibli films. Uh, and it's a stunning uh, uh, museum that they have of where that all started uh, in Tokyo. Um, okay, maybe you have a vision for your future career. It could be tied to Japan's innovation, to trade issues, business opportunities. Many people in high school go on to specialize, uh, learn the Japanese language, come back uh, and uh, engage in some kind of work based in Japan. Some of you may have seen, by the way, the, uh, the beautiful <clears throat> bamboo forest here in Kyoto to the left of my screen. What other reasons to come to Japan? Maybe you want to take a deep dive into Japanese pop culture, manga, anime, video games, music, uh, 
you name it, uh, it's a happening place. Okay, you're awed by cultural depth. By a history of 1,200 years here in Kyoto, by temples, shrines, gardens, the natural beauty of this place. Enough of pop culture, you say. Give me a quiet Zen temple, a meditation pillow. Let me breathe deeply of Kyoto. And as I said, it's my hometown. I can relate to this one. <clears throat> no, it's the food, silly. Japanese cuisine, which is uh, also a world heritage uh, cuisine uh, now. So we've got a lot of reasons, and I'm sure that some of these fit each of you, uh, if not all. Uh, and uh, we're happy that you've decided uh, to come uh, study with us in Japan. I've already pointed out that we have two centers of our activities in Japan, Tokyo, a very dynamic and cosmopolitan and safe and fascinating mix of old and new. Um, it's the center of government, uh, business, pop culture and shopping as well. But then you have Kyoto, a rich mix of deeply historical yet fashionably modern um, uh, things here in Kyoto. Uh, 17 World Heritage Sites, uh, temples, um, and as I've already said, the world's first manga museum. Up on the upper right, you'll see that Japan outside of its cities is a different place. I've got a couple of rural scenes, but once you're in Japan at either one of our centers, you have a bit of a a stepping stone into uh, the rest of Japan. We'll see how much we'll, we'll be able to do in that regard. <clears throat> Tokyo highlights. Uh, Karen, maybe you can jump in and, and help us uh, that we're imagining that you've just landed in Tokyo. And I've got something of a montage of photographs over here. But um, Karen, take it away. Yes. I'll just play timekeeper for for a second. If we could um, sure. maybe have as a goal to wrap up slides by thirty five, like in, like in fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Yes. yes. So uh, I'll just go along with uh, David's bullet points and add a, a couple comments. Um, so you you see, and you know, actually, Tokyo is a huge city, um, but as he put, it's not overwhelming. Uh, you'll you'll notice that well. My, one of my favorite things about being in Japan is that, yeah, there's a lot of really cool things to do, but especially with CIE, if you're there for three weeks, you go from the first couple of days of being a tourist and being overwhelmed by everything by just living in Japan. You wake up and you realize, wow, you know, I've been doing this for two weeks now and this is just my temporary home. Uh, and once you get to the point where you feel like you're living there, things definitely cease to be overwhelming. Still exciting, but not overwhelming. And of course, we'll, we'll help you to navigate the city of Tokyo as well. Um, and as David said, it's, it's very safe. It's easy to move around. Um, the trains are color coded. They run on time. Um, nobody's going to throw you out there and just go say, find your own way. You have um, program leaders to help you as well as your program mates. It really is one of the most user-friendly cities on the planet, I think. Um, and you can see uh, some of the, the highlights of, of Tokyo, including what David just said in terms of fashion. You definitely see lots of fun fashion. People are really into dressing very uniquely. And if you're into clothes, you can visit different shops and buy some of those clothes and try to create your own look, you know, your hybrid US Japan look. Uh, and also David mentions about the um, Tokyo Tower and Sky Tree. Uh, you can also, y'all are, are likely to be in a place called the Tokyo International Youth Hostel. And that in itself is a 19 story building and you can go up to the top and actually the public bath is on the 18th floor. So you can be soaking in the bath, looking over the city of Tokyo. It is so cool, but you get a good view of Tokyo from there as well. And as David mentioned, uh, there's uh, different things that you can do related to anime, including the uh, Studio Ghibli. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the movie called Your Name 
Uh, and there are many students who have gone around to the sites that are featured in your name to take photos and so on and eating. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you name it, it's got it. Indian food, Japanese food, Western food, cake, and um, all kinds of Karen's different- particularly fond of cake, by the way. Yes, I do mm. love cake. Uh, and I, you know, having lived in Tokyo and having been to Tokyo a number of times, hit me up. I can make some good suggestions of cake and other uh, delicacies. Um, so one thing that's really nice about Tokyo is you can see very modern, a modern side of Tokyo, but Tokyo has been around for a while. So you can go and see very traditional culture, even in Tokyo as well. We'll be sending these slides over so you can uh, take a look uh, uh, through the points we've made, but also a closer look at some of the photographs that we've put up. Um, the lower left hand is Studio Ghibli. Uh, the lower right, you'll see both Skytree and Tokyo Tower. The middle on the right, you see the, the nation's parliament. It's called the Diet Building uh, and so on. Upper right is Tokyo Station lit up at night. You know. I'm gonna give a little bit of background on Kyoto. So you've just arrived in Kyoto, and I've put some scenes off to the left here. Um, with its imperial palace, Kyoto served as Japan's capital, literally from a little over 1,200 years ago. Get your mind around that. It's, it's a very deep and rich history and, and cultural history. 17 UNESCO designated World Heritage Sites in and uh, immediately adjoining Kyoto. Not a, a city next uh, door has another seven World Heritage Sites. Uh, and it's just stunning to be able to uh, go around and see places that have been recognized on a global level, uh, World Heritage Sites. Up on the right, upper right-hand uh, corner of the photographs, you'll see part of Kyoto. This is looking down from one of the mountains. Um, hills surrounding Kyoto on three sides. Uh, I grew up right down to the right of that photograph. You see in the woods uh, uh, a white sort of set of structures. Uh, that's a hospital that my parents founded uh, 65 years ago. Uh, and I'm looking down from Daimonji a, uh, in this photograph. Uh, uh, we'll go into greater detail when you're out here to see um, Daimonji and the, and the hills. A lovely picturesque um, river flowing through the city with a park on both sides. Ah, as I mentioned earlier, possibly sitting Zazen, doing a bit of meditation. And there are five mountains of Zen, as they're called. They're not actually mountains. They're key main temples of one of the sects of Zen, Buddhism in Japan. Okay, and I've mentioned the world's first manga museum. And it's three minutes walk away from our CIA, CIEE -E Center here in Kyoto. That's me pictured uh, outside of the Manga Museum, the lower right hand uh, photograph. Um, we're very centrally located. And so uh, to be able to move from um, center where we are uh, in four directions, uh, and Kyoto is laid out in a, in a grid, so north, south, east, west. Uh, we're a two minute walk from where the two subway lines in Kyoto intersect, uh, which is, makes it very, very uh, convenient. Uh, and did we mention the food? And Kyoto uh, cuisine is particularly known, gyoryori and uh, shojin yori and various kinds of food here in Japan. Who do we have next, uh, Karen? Let's see. Maybe Karen can help us. Um, Okay, maybe I'll go for a little bit because we have two different kinds of programs uh, in Japan. Um, the one that is called HSSA Language and Culture. For those of you who have chosen the language and culture, either session one or two here in Kyoto, you're going to have about 15 hours of interactive Japanese language. Um, uh, so that's about three hours a day, five days a week. Uh, for your four weeks here in Japan, uh, in Kyoto, excuse me. Uh, and with that comes some community conversations. It says, Nihongo o hanashimasho. So you get to practice your Japanese locally, and if all goes well, in your home state as well. Um, 
We have daily cultural activities and excursions. Uh, pictured, by the way, lower right-hand corner picture. This is one of Japan's most famous manga artists. We have a good uh, relationship with him. He came in and, and has given demonstrations of his art, drawing his um, uh, manga characters that he's been drawing for 36 years, right in our center. Uh, and, uh, oh good, you have some free time to explore and, and have fun. You're not in the classroom all the time uh, and not always in group activity. So you'll be able to go out and about uh, with a couple of friends explore the city. I've mentioned that the plan is for you to be in homestays and uh, your breakfast and dinner would be provided at the homestay, but then you would be ordering lunch at one of several nearby restaurants. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly introduce you to where you can do that and, and have a variety of food and enjoy uh, being out and practicing your Japanese. Erin, you've been a teacher of Japanese. Tell us a little bit about um, learning the language here in Japan. Again, this is focused more heavily on those uh, in Tokyo, uh, sorry, in Kyoto, but you'll, um, yeah, take it away, right, Karen. Sure. Um, so one quick comment. Uh, one of your early slides, David, mentioned uh, you learning Japanese to impress your friends, and I cannot tell you how how true that is, honestly. Um, learning, learning Japanese really uh, gave me a lot of self-confidence, honestly, um, because people were like, oh, you speak Japanese, that's so cool. So definitely you can count on that as one of the, one of the bonuses. Um, yes, as David said, the uh, Kyoto program is called Language and Culture. So in Kyoto, you can expect to have daily classes that are going into the language a, a little bit more in depth. Um, maybe some of you have studied uh, Japanese at your school, so you'll recognize some components of learning Japanese in a, in a classroom. Um, and if you have learned Japanese at school and you have some background, then you'll be placed in a class with students who also have a background in, Japan, in Japanese. If you are a complete newbie to Japanese, which most students are, that's okay. There are classes that are specifically set up for you as well. Uh, okay, and as David mentions here on the slides, um, the teachers are teachers of Japanese that have been doing it before. They're familiar with the um, area. They're familiar with the curriculum. In fact, uh, most of the teachers have a hand in helping to develop that curriculum. So you can be confident that you're not just getting somebody that happens to speak Japanese in the classroom, but they're trained professionals. And uh, the last point is that they're coordinated with excursions and activities. That's a really unique thing I think about CIE is, CIE is that uh, they're all put together. Um, so what you practice in class, you have uh, opportunities to learn something, practice it, and then you go out and you actually use those skills. So for example, maybe you're in class practicing a shopping scenario, and then you actually go out and you have a shopping task that you can do. And then maybe you um, go home to your homestay family and you describe what you bought. So all of these things are meant to be integrated to give you the best chance at really learning this language. And the last, last point of course, is that we're excited and hope that you are as well. Um, let's go to the next slide, uh, Karen, uh, and maybe you can keep going. Sure. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the Kyoto program is Japanese language and culture, whereas the Tokyo program is focused more on pop culture, but that's not to say that you are completely uh, separated from language learning. Um, we could call it survival Japanese for lack of a better word maybe, but you are living in Japan, as I said, not just visiting. Uh, and part of living in Japan means, for example, taking the train. And so your classes will be designed to help you learn how to navigate the train system. Um, excuse me, I want to go to Harajuku, which train, which train should I take? Things like that. So don't worry, you're not being thrown to navigate all of this by yourself, but your teachers will help support you with your, again, daily survival Japanese, 
as well as Japanese that ties directly into things that are related to pop culture, anime, gaming, etc. Great, thank you, Karen. You'll see on this slide uh, actual destinations, and we're going to uh, switch to a slide uh, that uh, gives you a sense of some of the cultural activities and destinations. The upper right-hand photograph is the Great Buddha in Nara, about a 40-minute um, train ride away from Kyoto. I've already shown you Fushimi Inari to the left, the bamboo forest, and in the middle bottom, you'll see one of our students who is ringing a giant temple bell uh, on the top of Mount Hie overlooking Kyoto at Endyakuji Temple. Uh, lots of fun things to do. Uh, and so the excursions, um, as Karen's just said, each activity excursion is designed to bring to life some aspect of the uh, Japanese language program that you've done. And this is in the Kyoto area. Um, if you're in Tokyo, imagine a trip out to Studio Ghibli. We can't promise it in this uh, COVID-19 era. Uh, some things are restricted, but uh, we'll be working on uh, a full array of um, activities, and this is a potential one to get out to Studio Ghibli. I've been, it's fascinating. In Kyoto, one of my favorite spots, and it's off the beaten track, is the home that Kawai Kanjiro, a folk artist, lived in and worked in, and it's now a memorial um, uh, to his life. And it's just fascinating because you're inside a Japanese traditional home with a folk artist that, uh, who used to live and work there. Uh, and so we'd be getting out and, and seeing that as well. Um, from Tokyo, a day trip uh, possibly to historic Kamakura. It was the capital for a little while. It has Zen temples and uh, the very large seated Buddha uh, in Kamakura. And in Kyoto, uh, as I've mentioned, Several of the photographs in this, um, on this slide are over in uh, Nara, the Deer Park, uh, uh, and it's just uh, a culturally rich area out around both Tokyo and around Kyoto as well. Um, I've mentioned that those of you who are coming to Kyoto will likely be in homestays. Uh, again, uh, the situation is evolving, but um, John, uh, upper left hand, that's his host mom and, and uh, one of uh, her kids. Uh, uh, let's see, Hannah, upper, upper right, that's a couple of her teachers in the high school that she uh, was affiliated with. You see some of the um, food. For those of you who are uh, placed in homestay families, they come in all shapes and sizes. And the, the real um, unique experience in a homestay is that it's a, a family different from what you grew up in. Um, all of those families support our international educational exchange uh, efforts. They open their homes for a shared cultural experience. Uh, they'll provide you your own room, prepare meals, as I said, twice a day. Uh, you can hang out in the evenings and weekends when uh, your family and, and your schedules match. Uh, and you get to immerse yourself in learning Japanese culture firsthand. Um, David, yes. if I can just add one quick thing uh, so sure. there's no misunderstanding. It says yep. that they prepare meals twice a day. That doesn't mean that y'all only get to eat twice. There's a stipend <laughs> for you to eat one of the meals every day, which means that you get to go out and try, you know, a whole menu of things of your, of your choosing. Indeed. Uh, that's what I mentioned, uh, that... Uh, breakfast and dinner are provided by the homestay families and lunch you'll be um, making arrangements on your own and uh, on the weekend also you'll be um, uh, out and about and eating on your own. Thanks Karen. Right. Um, we've mentioned that there are these two cities but also two kinds of programs. Uh, Tokyo it's uh, a program uh, just three week session it's Japanese popular culture anime manga and gaming uh, and in Kyoto two sessions, four weeks each, the language and culture. Uh, but don't think that you don't get to do manga. As I mentioned, our, our center is just literally minutes away from the International Manga Museum. Um, I wanna spend just a, a couple minutes up here. I know that we're running short of time, but this is a very important dimension that uh, I want, wanted to go over with you. Your lives have been interrupted by 
uh, this pandemic. Uh, for all of you, wherever you are uh, joining us, um, my heart goes out to you because each one of us in some way has been impacted by this pandemic. Um, you'll see a, a variety of photographs and, and depictions here. Uh, Japan has been remarkably successful. If you look at international charts, uh, the United States, of course, is in the throes of a very, very painful pandemic. Uh, and um, we're happy that the vaccines started to be administered and, and are on its way. Um, uh, the, the fellow by the, uh, in the middle upper left of these photographs uh, is former Minister of Foreign Affairs for Japan, a buddy of mine I've known for 22 years. Uh, and then some depictions of how Japan is going about uh, dealing with um, uh, the pandemic. Overall, COVID-19 numbers have been extremely low in Japan. Um, and uh, I want to say that wearing masks has been culturally accepted here in Japan for years, for decades. And so it did not take much effort at all to convince the public uh, uh, to wear masks. Um, when you're here, there are things that will be required and expected of you. Wearing a mask, disinfecting, washing frequently, avoiding crowding, practicing social distancing, and respecting others. Wearing a mask is not just for you, it's for others also to be comforted. And I like uh, the social distancing of the Beatles walking across Abbey Road uh, with the two in the middle taken out just to provide two meters, uh, about two yards in between. We will be updating you as the situation evolves. Uh, and CIEE is known for the strength of its HSS, that's health, safety and security. And we will be running a program that keeps you safe and secure. And we'll be updating you, as I said, uh, as we go. I think that's the last of my slides. 